I went out to Great Salt Lake, this place that I've lived near and never really visited my whole life. And I remember walking along the sand and, and feeling like I shouldn't be getting this mud on my skin and sort of stepping over dead birds and wading through clouds of flies and, and getting really, really hot and uncomfortable. And I remember thinking, yeah, this is why nobody comes out here. I don't think I'll come here either. People don't know too much about Great Salt Lake because it's difficult to love. If you go with an open mind, um, you might find something you weren't expecting. I love wildlife and I love birds. So wildlife photography had always appealed to me. There's nothing else that I do that makes me sit in one place in nature and observe so closely. I might spend two or three hours with one bird and I might take 5,000 images. It's just an incredible experience to be able to be that close with an animal and observe them in that way. Great Salt Lake is quite the mecca for birds. I realized pretty quickly that the landscape at Great Salt Lake was something that can't be found really anywhere else. It feels like you're on a different planet. It feels like another world. So I started going out there and trying to capture the feeling that I got at Great Salt Lake along with the birds. But I don't think I really understood how important Great Salt Lake was for birds until I started going out there fairly regularly. It's an irreplaceable habitat for birds. So this should be water all the way as far as you can see, all the way out to the Salt Lake City skyline. But right now what we're looking at is a couple of uh, small remnant puddles. Um, I'm surprised actually they're still here. So this is what I wanted to see if there was actually water flowing under this causeway and there's just a trickle. Great Salt Lake is almost entirely cut off from its tributaries at this point, which means water's only going out. When I see the rapid disappearance of water, it's a gut punch every single time. You know, every single time I go out there and I realize hundreds more miles of bird habitat is gone. It's really hard. It's a difficult thing for me. If the lake continues on its current trajectory, the ecology of Great Salt Lake will collapse. There's no more food for birds. 10 million birds are at risk. That is uh, nearly a third of all of the birds in the Intermountain West. Everything that goes into that lake stays there. And as the sediment dries up um, and big dust storms roll through, it goes airborne and then we get to breathe it. And that's laced with heavy metals, mercury, arsenic, those sorts of things. What we're up against is not only the legal framework around how we use water, but people's attitudes about the lake itself need to radically change. It's the redheaded stepchild of Utah's natural wonders. People that live here are accustomed to thinking of the lake as a wasteland, and they're accustomed to thinking of any water that goes into the lake as being wasted. And that has to change. So many people have taken beautiful landscape photos of Great Salt Lake, but I think what's missing in a lot of those images is the robust, incredible oasis of life that it really is. It's teeming with life. I want them to see it as an oasis and as a place that deserves to exist. I still have hope that people will move mountains and make this come back, right? Bring the lake back. We're past the point at which there will be no impact on birds. But I still think we can keep populations from crashing to zero. As long as they're still out there trying to make it, I'm gonna be trying to save it for them.